again. So run for the hills if you don't want to watch. Um, I thought I'd do a video of kind of highlights from uh, Google I.O. 2015. So let's uh, go ahead and get started here. Um, one sec. Alright, so. Alright, so anyway, um, go ahead and get started here. So, of course, Google I.O. Uh, was on Thursday, um, which would have been 28th of May 2015. And uh, so, yeah, and they had quite a few announcements. And yes, Android M was one of them. The uh, much uh, anticipated, I guess, update to try and fix a lot of the issues that Android L, that Lollipop, has uh, kind of put up or made kind of worse or whatever. So I'm going to go over here where I'm a little more um, kind of just out of the way, that way it's not a bunch of people just walking around, running. but anyway, um, so first off I'll tell you that they showed some people who were watching from Mexico City, Munich, Germany, and a college in Kenya, I can't remember the little town, but anyway. So yeah, that was kind of a, an interesting thing, you know, showed some, uh, just from around the world. Uh, another one, oh, so, uh, sorry, anyway, um, also, oh, I don't drop my uh, phone, um, also, uh, Android M, I'll, I'll give you the highlights on that. So, Android M is going to have better app permissions. So the app permissions, the apps will ask you permission when you try to use a specific feature, and you can modify the permissions from settings. So, what you'll be able to do is, uh, like, let's say that you had, um, I don't know, something that some app that uses the camera, right? So you bring it up as the camera app. What it'll do is, when you actually try to use the camera, that's when it asks you for permission to use the camera. So instead of asking you right when you download it with a list of these permissions, it'll ask you one at a time. Uh, there's kind of nice things and not so nice things about it. I mean, one nice thing is that you get better kind of control over your app. So like there was a, I know that there was a lot of people who talked about uh, um, Facebook and their instant messaging one, the Facebook chat or whatever that was, and of course you know you couldn't use the Facebook app anymore to message people, so you'd have to use that Facebook one, and it said, oh, we need permission to access your uh, microphone, you know, and and of course, and I think camera too, and of course that was mainly because. Now, granted, Facebook has, um, yeah, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen that that show, that movie, that documentary. Um, uh, terms and conditions may apply, so I know what they do with our information, but we give it to them anyway. So it's like, you know, it's your fault, it's our fault, you know. But um, anyway. Um, So I know that people were like, oh my gosh, they can use our microphone at any time. Really, they were using it when you'd press the call button. So I'm pretty sure that if you downloaded that app after Android M, you get the Android M, you know, update. Uh, and you, then you download it, it would probably ask you when you actually try to use the microphone instead of, you know, just right away. And uh, anyway, so that's, that's one feature. Um... 
And like I said, you can go into settings and then turn it off if you want to. Another feature is uh, the web experience is better. Um, Chrome Custom Tabs allows the Chrome browser to run on top of the app you're in, uh, but it's only the pages that are with the, that app, so it's pages that are verified to be kind of owned by the app or, you know, run by the pers the, the company or organization or whatever that has that app out. So whatever is legal for them to go on to, that's what it does. No, I don't want to do anything to the note. Okay. Um, third, app linking between other apps. The server uh, will search for uh, for only the apps that the service owns. So like I said, you know, um, whatever that app, you know, developer owns, that's what it'll, or you have, has permission to go on to, to access. Anyway, um, <laughs> and they're doing something called mobile payments. Now, of course, Android phones have had NFC for quite a while, um, and Google Wallet has been out for quite a while. But what they're doing is they're doing something they're dubbing Android Pay, and yes, it was in a circle, kind of like Apple Pay was, and I'm like, uh, you know, um, and it basically works exactly the same way. You use your NFC chip to, you know, tap, and that's it. So, anyway, um, it's not like it's a bad thing. I mean, they're, they're copying something that works, I guess, or hopefully works. And yes, it does have the whole, um, all those features of, uh, you know, Apple Pay, um, security and everything. They're trying to do the exact same thing where it's like a one time, uh, it doesn't use your actual card numbers and stuff like that. It uses something else, you know, that they make up and blah, blah, blah. And they have quite a few companies already in on it at the get-go and of course that's probably most likely because they actually have the technology now because they were porting for Apple Pay and I'm pretty sure it uses the same you know I mean you just have to use the NFC chip so and of course the phone has to be you know I mean there's probably more to it obviously but anyway so there's that um, fingerprint support because uh, they know that there's been a few phones I think LG was the first one I, I don't know you can correct me on that but um, one of them had, was the first one to have a fingerprint sensor and it wasn't the best at least from what I've heard uh, you know when I, what I had heard at the time so um, anyway so there's that um, they're making fingerprint uh, support they're making fingerprint APIs standard on Android so instead of like uh, you know just an OEM doing it themselves you know it'll be on the Android platforms APIs you know sets of APIs and everything so by the way if I am furry not not to be confused with that uh, uh, you know furries but uh, if I am hairy on my shirt is because that there's a, a cat that we have staying in our house right now and that's kind of he sheds a lot <laughs> he's an old cat he's he's been I've known him for a long time I know it sounds funny that I'm saying it like oh I've known him for a long time like he's a friend of mine but and he is he's you know an animal friend of mine but anyway so there's that and then uh, power and charging they have a new feature called doze and uh, they're dubbing it doze and what it does is when your phone has been off for a while um, what it'll do is it'll it'll keep like your phone antenna up but it'll turn off all the background apps and everything like that because you haven't checked it in a while so then you know of course it'll flood back into your phone when it you know when you check it again but it helps to ease the battery and I think that 
you know, some that's kind of good and bad because the bad thing will be that it'll come flooding in at the, you know, when you do that. At least from experiences that I've had with devices that have tried that type of thing. But anyway, um, so yeah, and of course they're do, they're trying to standardize USB C type C that they're trying to do, of course. And that's the reversible one, the flippable one. Like, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot like, um, like the lightning cable, except for I think that it can actually even go into the existing, uh, USB, micro USB ports right now. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But, uh, anyway, what it, what it is, is it's open, unlike the ones that we have now. So, um, but anyway... So there's that. Uh, da, 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 da. Simplified volume controls and floating toolbars for things like copy and paste, uh, and of course more. Um, but I'm not gonna say everything, I guess. But then they touched base on Android Wear. Android Wear has grown, I guess, a little bit. So they're improving that. Um, they made a kind of a joke. They're like, "Oh, we're improving the clock. You know, we're we're improving how to tell time on you know telling time on that." It's like, okay, so yeah, they're making the clock better on a watch. It's, seems like it should be the first thing to do. Anyway, uh, they will have always-on settings for apps to stay on, and wrist gestures and emoji drawing support. So they're kind of making that better. Um, Number two is better integration of the hardware in the wearables. So, like, if it has specific, uh, um, specific, you know, like accelerometers and all that stuff, the hardware inside, it's going to take it, the Android Wear itself, like the OS that they use, is going to use those specific uh, hardware capabilities. So, anyway in a better, better way. Uh, is there something on my neck? No, <laughs> um, anyway, uh, there are more than 4,000 apps that are built specifically for Android Wear, and probably more being built all the time. Then, of course, they touched based on Internet of Things, or as they call it, IoT. Um, they introduced something called Brillo that they're still working on. It's derived from Android, but it's scaled down so that it works with lower memory, lower RAM uh, um, uh, electronics, you know. So something like your your laundry, your washer and dryer, stuff like that, wouldn't have a huge, you know, like a, a 2 gigabyte RAM on it. You know, it'd have like a... 50 megabyte RAM, you know, type of thing. So, anyway, I don't know how much it has because I haven't looked into that stuff. I'm not really one for the smart, uh, the smart electronics, whatever you want to call it. But it, I, I see how it could be useful because then if you're like on the couch and let's say that you know that you needed to, uh, to, or you're in bed, you know, and you, you, you've got to go to sleep right away. But if you get up, you know, your blood, your juices will come flowing back around, you know, and you'll be more awake and you won't be able to get to sleep as, as quick. At least that happens to me a lot. Um, so then, like, if you're in bed, you know, and you know that you need to dry your clothes more because your clothes usually need to dry more. Like, if you have really thick jackets or something like that, you just press a button on your phone and be like... And then the dryer starts again, and you're like, okay, <laughs> you know, type of thing. But anyway, I'm kind of rambling. Well, that's what I'm going to do, I guess. Never really done this kind of long format before, I guess. Um, then they did something called Weave, and it's that's the what they're calling the communication between the devices, um, cross-platform. So it's going to be working on iOS, Android, hopefully Windows, blackberry whatever and i'll bet you that they'll they'll try and do that um anyway um 
Okay, another big one is a better developer APIs with Cocoa Pods, so that you can, uh, you can like let's say that you had, you're developing on Android, but then you want to get into iOS too. Um, what they've done is they've added Cocoa Pods so that you could actually, because that's what uh, iOS is based on is Cocoa, which is the uh, the underlying language of OS 10 and iOS is and, and iOS but which is Apple's one you know but Microsoft or Macintosh OS 10 you know the Apple OS 10 one uh, is called Coco and that is you know what they develop on anyway yeah that's something I won't get into too much but anyway uh and then they talked about better Google Now with uh, their robot learning is what they called it. And I'm like, eh, that's kind of creepy. Can someone say Terminator? Someone can, and they probably will. Um, uh, so it's going to be better Google Now integration and stuff like that. Um, which I think Google Now actually works pretty well. At least it did when it first came out, and I, I thought it worked extremely well when it first came out. And it's, I don't know if it's really gotten better. I think it's pretty much stayed the same to me, if not has gotten a little bit worse. So hopefully this will make it better. Uh, the new Photos app from Google, uh, they've updated that. And so if you use the Photos app, you know, which, uh, you know, now they're, they're going to do uh, up to... 16 uh, up to 16 megapixel cameras of you know photos uh, will be ported unlimited to your uh, photos li uh, library you know in the cloud if you want so but it will be scaled down to I think 5 megapixels or 10 no 10 10 megapixels anyway it's going to be scaled down i think but uh but it's up to 16 megapixels um and it'll and you have unlimited storage on that now so your photos and videos i guess and the videos will be up to 1080p so which is perfectly fine you know i mean <laughs> heck 1080p is better than some tvs that are still out there you know that people actually still use not the new ones that people can't afford to buy. So, because I mean, those are nice, but, you know, hey, you got $5,000, $10,000, whatever. I'd rather spend that on a car than a TV right now. But uh, anyway, but their Photos app reminds me of, uh, it actually reminds me of uh, Apple's Photos application, but uh, um, not quite as frost you know, frosty, I guess, <laughs> frost glass type of stuff, um, but it has all the same things, the places, the events, all that stuff, and it has the face recognition stuff, so, yes, stuff is a technical term, um, so, anyway, and, and it does really well, it even tells who the baby was, you know, like years ago, it'll, It'll be able to to tell what you know how the face has grown and everything through the years. So, so yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, and backup is pretty good too. Of course, everybody's doing that nowadays. So yeah. Uh, new family rated games on the App Store, games and apps, uh, are shown by a blue star. So if you look for this blue kind of cartoonish star, that's family uh, approved apps and games. Uh, they put out a new Google Cardboard, <laughs> so, so that you can pay 20 bucks for an updated version of the Cardboard. It's Cardboard. <laughs> Make your own, you know, just look on the, look on the web and go down to the grocery store, get a, a cardboard box that they're about to throw away and just make it yourself. <laughs> anyway, um, but they do have a magnetic, uh, button on there. And they've made it better to work with uh, with more phones. They've also made it bigger so that it can fit the six-inch uh, screen sizes of phones. All this crazy stuff. So, anyway, 
Um, and then better virtual reality or VR integration. And GoPro has a new, they've worked with GoPro to put up this new camera rig and it uses 16 different cameras, I think it was, 16 different GoPros in a circle and uh, using the geometry of that. And what it'll do is each camera will interlap, you know, with each other. So it'll be like do 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 do, you know, and it takes one picture at the same time and in a 360 degree radius. So what it'll do is radius 360 degrees, you know, all the way around and it'll format it to a, you know, a, a panorama. And what it'll do is it'll, the technology will sew the, the lines together, you know, the blurs. So it'll tell like, oh, hey, this person's head is over, it's really like this, not like this, you know, um, obviously. Anyway, um, 360 degree radius. They worked on a video output for the VR, okay, for this, uh, this new VR technology and they're calling it YouTube never heard of it but you know I'm sure it's gonna be great so um, they have new self-driving cars and uh, here I'll show you a photo of that I would show you the photo of the GoPros but I didn't take one a screenshot you know um, this is from their live event so I'll show you that if I can get to it Oh, that's not screenshots. That's screenshots. That's screenshots. So, this is their current one here. Um, okay, one sec. So, oh, one sec. So if it'll, if it'll focus, this is their current one, and this is their new one, and it has a bunch of different sensors on it and everything like that. Um, and what is this? Oh yeah, that's a Kindle Fire. <laughs> but anyway, um, and so... And it uh, it's able to actually detect even people that are walking around and everything like that. It's pretty amazing. It was pretty good. And they're going to be driving. They're going to be not driving them, releasing these into the wild. Uh, releasing them into the wild uh, in Mountain View, California. So yeah, you if you live there, you'll be seeing that. And if you live there, you probably haven't seen this. So you know, anyway, this uh, video. Then they're trying to do this thing they're calling Project Loon. And what it is, is it's a weather balloon. And if it will focus. If it'll focus on this, I'll be able to show you. It's focusing a little, focusing a little bit. Anyway, um, what there is on there is that thing on the bottom is actually a, uh, it's a antenna rig, I, I guess, you know, with some power and stuff like that. And what they're doing is they're able to actually, they're able to make these things that they're lasting about over a hundred days, a little bit over a hundred days now. Uh, their last balloon. Um, lasted a little bit over 50 days so they've gone up quite a bit um, and what that'll do is that'll send out if it'll focus on this that'll send out um, 10 megabits per second connectivity so 4G or well LTE speeds um, uh, to uh, people within a radius, uh, uh, basically a radius that equals the state of Rhode Island, I think is what they said. 
the amount of space that they can cover with just one balloon. So anyway, and then uh, um, 500 meter accuracy or mile, I think it's meter accuracy um, for the, their control on the balloons or something like that. Uh, four times the coverage area, so that's what I was saying. And the craziest thing is that what they're trying to do is they're trying to use this for people that live in like third world countries or mountainous areas or things like that where they can't get, um, sorry, one, one sec, uh, where they can't get, uh, get connection very well. So yeah, or at all even, um, and I think that that's it. Uh, but on a side note, and this was not at Google I.O., this was just what I heard and actually saw the... I use Inbox from Google. Uh, I was able to get the preview, you know, the beta or whatever. It's, I can't remember what they called it. You know, it was like a preview, and it was for people who you had to get invited by Google, you know, to do that. But anyway, um, Inbox is now available for everyone, so it's now public. It's gone live. And, uh, not like it was difficult to really get into in the first place, but anyway, that is, uh, exactly, you know, that was Google IO's highlights. So, you know, um, remember to, or well, thank you for watching for one thing and, uh, remember to like, subscribe, comment, share my videos uh, and just be yourself. Thanks. I'm going to fade in on red, not black red.